Over the years, the United States Air Force has become a huge force to reckon with regarding advanced weaponry. From stealth bombers to hypersonic missiles, this advancement in weaponry has given the United States a decisive military advantage in any war. Recently, the US Air Force has taken a step forward in its weaponry game and developed a new weapon with potential catastrophic destruction. What is this weapon? Stay till the end as we explore the US Air Force's world of weaponry and stay until the end to find out the influence of this weapon on EMPs. Laser weapons may seem to be a stuff of science fiction rather than reality, something we might see in a James Bond or Star Wars film, but not in real life. However, Experiments with viable laser weapons have been conducted since the late 20th century, implying that laser weapons may be the new sheriff in town when it comes to weaponry in the future. And that future is about to be near, as the US Air Force has announced that they're working on a spectacular leap forward in laser technology at the beginning of 2021. This newly improved laser technology, the tactical ultra-short pulsed laser for Army platforms, has a huge potential to enhance the US Army's capabilities greatly. The tactical ultra-short pulsed laser for Army platforms is a powerful machine with a higher intensity of up to a million times more than the sun. This revolutionary laser is housed in a compact portable device that can be carried by military and field personnel and is more effective than every other form of laser used by the Army previously. Laser weapons that use heat or light to attack targets have several potential advantages. Since their inception, laser weapons have been based on two principles. Earlier versions of this weaponry used a stream of intense energy projected along a beam onto a target, such as a drone or a missile, causing key components to melt and fail. A powerful generator, capable of generating up to 30 kilowatts of power, is required to fire such a beam. At lower power levels, the same system can project a beam of light that sparkles and confuses sensors on target systems, causing them to malfunction again. The US Navy is believed to be the first to try out such a system in the Arabian Gulf in 2014. The device, a laser weapon system, LAWS, built by Raytheon, was mounted on the USS Ponce, an aging amphibious transport vessel, and tested against two targets. The first was a small boat with a mounted missile, and the second was an aerial drone. The results in both cases were impressive in terms of accuracy and impact as it disrupted and then destroyed both targets by causing them to catch fire. At the time of the trial, the US claimed that the test location, close to Iranian waters in the Gulf, was not intended to be provocative. Instead, it was claimed that the atmospheric conditions in that location were useful for testing the weapon's reliability and accuracy. However, incidents such as the attack on the USS Cole in 2000, in which 17 sailors were killed by a speeding boat packed with explosives, have prompted the world's navies to consider how to best counter rapid and low-tech attacks on their naval vessels in such locations. The introduction of small, fast-moving aerial drones has further heightened concerns. These first-generation laser weapons have various potential advantages over conventional munitions. Firstly, they are much faster from shooter to target than projectile munitions, and thus much more accurate over the distance against small, fast, and agile targets. Second, while the first systems were costly, the Raytheon system tested in 2014 cost around $32 million. The munitions cost is meager, representing only the cost of producing a burst of electricity. This is significantly less expensive than a guided missile, costing more than $1 million each. The LAWS also supports continuous munitions, with each shot ready in the time it takes the generator to cool and recharge. However, there are drawbacks to the LAWS technology. Since it's an optical-based system, it faces problems with some atmospheric conditions like fog, rain, and sand particles in the atmosphere, all of which can affect the accuracy and range of the system. Also, mounting a a weapon like this on a pitching ship requires complex technology to maintain accuracy. This same system has been tried out in other domains. The US military tested an airborne anti-ballistic missile laser, ABL, in the late 1990s. But generating enough electrical power to make the system effective proved difficult. And that's the end of it. The land-based anti-artillery tactical high-energy laser project is also faced with the same issue. It required a massive generator and fuel trailer to power it. The high cost and lack of maneuverability of such a system forced it to be scrapped. 
There were also concerns about laser weapons missing their targets, as they could accidentally destroy a civilian system, such as a communication satellite or a commercial aircraft. Though this is not limited to laser weapons, taking out aerial drones can also be a problem if they crash land in populated areas, causing casualties on the ground. Defensive measures against laser shots such as heat-resistant and reflective coatings are also easy to develop. However, the ultra-short pulsed laser has come to save the day for the Army. The system has the potential to solve lots of these issues while still providing all of the benefits of laser weapons. The benefits it offers are based on a fundamental change in the concept. The ultra-short pulse laser produces a much higher burst of electricity than previous weapons, at around a trillion watts. Still, it does so in a much shorter burst, typically one quadrillionth of a second. The second important factor in the revolutionary laser system is that it does not aim to physically burn a target with high energy, to the same extent as previous laser weapons, but instead it disrupts and destroys electrical systems using the concept of electromagnetic pulse EMP, energy. The EMP's aspect of the ultra-short pulse laser is helpful because it would help ensure the downing of enemy drones. Even if the laser does not burn enough material from the drone to cause it to crash, or if the drone relies on sensors not blinded by the laser beam GPS, the EMP could destroy it. The ultra-short pulse laser uses this approach to address several shortcomings of the previous laser systems. A dramatically shorter dwell time on the target means greater pinpoint accuracy against a fast-moving target and a significantly faster delivered effect. The risk of disruption caused by the pitch of a vehicle or vessel firing the weapon and atmospheric conditions interfering with the beam is greatly reduced by the shot's split-second duration. Similarly, the system reduces the possibility of a miss or hitting the wrong target. In terms of cost, the cost is greatly reduced despite the increase in the burst of each power, and it also retains the benefits of previous laser systems, such as an infinite supply of munitions subject to the system being powered. The technology that underpins the UPL system demonstrates enormous potential in civilian contexts. Light pulses of a fraction of a second can target and cut materials with absolute accuracy. This enables increasingly accurate nanoengineering and design, such as microscopic surgical instruments, sensors, or electrical device components. The accurate burst of energy also significantly reduces the temperature load on surrounding materials. The technology has greatly improved our understanding and design of various reflective and conducting materials and surfaces, delicate surgical methods such as eye surgery, would become much more accurate and less likely to damage surrounding tissues. Even procedures such as removing tattoos are possible by pulverizing ink particles under the skin, thanks to the ultra-short pulse laser technology. In the military domain, the potential risks of EMP interference have become a growing concern as systems become network dependent. Indeed, networked communications and geolocational data are at the heart of much of the technology used in autonomous and remote warfare systems, and the huge impact of EMP on them can be seen in the 1859 Carrington event. The 1859 Carrington event saw a huge coronal mass ejection from the sun release electromagnetic energy that fried telegraph wires worldwide. The U.S. and the Soviet Union also detected in the 20th century that EMPs are also a side effect of a nuclear detonation, the process by which an exploding nuclear bomb releases electromagnetic energy. Energy accumulates in electronic devices near an explosion, shorting them out and rendering them inoperable. Further tests on the high-altitude weapon revealed a much larger effect known as high-altitude EMP. Hemp, which had the potential to disable electrical systems across entire states and regions. The destructive potential of such an attack was undoubtedly developed on both sides during the Cold War. There is some evidence that modern powers such as North Korea have considered it in their own military development. More tactical uses of EMP have been considered against specific systems on a much smaller scale. EMP grenades are one example of such an application. EMP grenade technology 
which may be more familiar to players of video games like Halo or Call of Duty, has been tested by the US military as a potential defense against small and localized threats like detonators on improvised explosive devices, IEDs. Therefore, the ultra-short pulse laser technology translates the long-understood concept of EMP into the futuristic world of laser weapons aimed at modern threats such as UAVs that rely on complex electrical components. Power generation capabilities on a portable and cost-effective scale will continue to be a major challenge for all platforms, whether on land, at sea, or in the air. However, if these obstacles can be overcome, the types of weapons seen in the Star Wars films will soon become a realistic component of modern military capability. What is your opinion on this revolutionary weapon created by the U.S. Air Force? Let us know in the comment section. If you haven't done so, be sure to subscribe to this channel for more informative videos like this. Thanks for watching.